For this video, we're going to take a look at the timeline, sequencer, and touch on graph mode. So that way you can understand how you can access these areas of the timeline when working in Moho. So to start off, we have a basic animation here, a nice little 3D looking animation of a car stationary. Perhaps it's driving, maybe we're going to add in a scrolling background. Whatever the case is, we have an animation on the timeline. And when you open up Moho, by default, you have access to the channel's timeline. And on the bottom, you'll see that you have access to the timeline. We can scrub it. We can play it. We can rewind. We can go back one frame if we want. We can go to the next keyframe. You have all these tools up here to navigate the timeline. In addition, you can come over here and quickly go to frame zero, which is our workspace. That is nice. Then you have the ability to change between sequencer, channels, and then graph mode. And then we have onion skins you can enable. We also have the ability to do relative keyframing, auto freeze keys. And as you can see, the list goes on. You just have the ability to come in here. You can push frames left or right. You can set up if you want them to be pushed more than just two frames or less, however you want to do that. And you can even add markers to help you with your animation. So maybe you come to frame 66 and you add a marker and you want to add a note to that marker. So that way you can maybe remind yourself to complete a task or maybe you're working in a group and having notes can help you communicate the different work processes you're going through with this project. So when it comes to working with Moho, you'll probably be spending a good deal of time in the channel's timeline. This is where we can come in and easily look at which channels are being animated on a certain layer. So here, we only really have this bone animating on this bone layer. And you can see that it's animating on the canvas right here. But we also have indication on the timeline as to what this is doing. Not only do we have keys indicating certain changes on the timeline, but we also have a cycle occurring where the bone is just going to keep going back and forth to animate out this sequence. If we come over here and click on what's called the sequencer, here we can choose when we want animations to begin on our timeline. A good example of this would be coming back here and watching this animation from the beginning. You can see it starts at frame one and immediately just starts to drive. However, if we came over here on the sequencer and we click and dragged on this bone layer, and we bring it up to, let's say, one second, a couple things will happen. First, you're going to note that this green line appears on the sequencer, but also this green arrow appears indicating, hey, it's going to play past here. So on frame 25 is when it's going to begin actually playing. This is kind of like your frame zero right now. So if we come over here and hit play, you'll notice that nothing starts to really happen until we hit that one second mark. So if we bring it up to two seconds, come back here, you can see that it's just going to be stationary until it starts to initiate like that. So the sequencer is nice if you need to time things up. Perhaps you have an audio file that you are working with, and when you import it, it's not synced up to where you need it. You want the character to start talking at five seconds, but the audio file is at let's say one second, you can click and drag and bring that audio file up to where it needs to be. So that way you can start that process. And then we have graph mode. We dedicated a whole video to graph mode, but if we come in here and let's just play around with this really quick to give you a refresher. As an example, if I click on the bone layer, you're going to see here that we have no animation indicating because of that sequencer edit we just applied. But once we start animating, you can see we have this nice wave effect showing us the motion. And if we double click and go in here more, you can see this even more drastically. And we could start to alter it if we wanted to using the graph. So if we wanted to make sure that this isn't going as drastically as it was, you can see here we can come in here and reduce that. And all of these little mounds go along with this keyframe because this is indicating the cycle. So no matter what we change here, it's also going to change it almost if we break the cycle, then of course these will go away and then we could add in variations. And again, if you're looking for more details on how to work with graph mode, 
I just suggest you check out that video where we go more into depth. So while we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at interpolations. So when you're on your channels, and let's say you are right here in the middle of this animation, on this keyframe, we can either click once, and you'll notice when we do this, that smooth and one changes to red. And this is just following a similar pattern that Moho has always followed, and that is whenever something is selected, it changes red. So if we were to change this particular setting right now, it's only going to affect this keyframe or any of the selected keyframes, rather than if we deselect, this means now if we were to change this, whatever future keyframes we add down, let's say we change this to linear and we come over here and we double click, you can see now it's a linear keyframe because we set that ahead of time. However, if you want to come in here and let's say we right click on this keyframe, which is set to smooth, right clicking also works for this as well as the drop down. You could come in here and let's say we decide to go linear again. Now, if we come back here to the graph mode, this is going to give you a better indication of what this is actually doing. So let me come in here and just change this again to smooth. You can see that it alters the way that this is looking. If we come back here and choose ease in, once again, it kind of rounds out the graph here to make it a little bit more of a slowdown near the middle, and then it kind of speeds up again. And it's just very easy to come in here and see what this is doing with graph mode. And noisy is also a very good indicator of this. Noisy just basically makes it look like it's, well, kind of jittery, as you can see here. It's doing it a little bit. And you can come in here then to your interpolations right here on your keyframe diagram. You can go up to window and then choose keyframe if you wish to bring this up. You can choose the amplitude and all of that. So you can see here as we're adjusting this, it's really greatly enhancing or not so much enhancing, but just changing the way this is looking. So you can see that we're coming in here now and we have that jittery effect occurring with noisy. And we can definitely tell on graph mode what this is going to do just based on this line work right here. And finally, let's talk a little bit about intervals. So I'm going to come over here and actually change this back to smooth. So you can see now we just have this nice smooth animation once again. Now by default, Moho will play every frame that you see on the timeline. We currently have a timeline set to 24 frames per second. And every single frame is going to be accounted for as we have it standing. However, if you want to, let's say, skip every other frame or every third frame or even more if you want, let's click once on this key to demonstrate this. And the drop down menu for smooth is how we interpolate. But next to that is a one. And if we click on this, you'll see that the title is interval. And here we can go all the way up to six. Now, I think the best way to demonstrate this is to choose two. And you can very easily see what this is doing with the graph mode. It's essentially just playing every other frame and you're getting a more choppy look due to it. So if we come back here and just play this out again, you can see it almost looks like it has a lower frame rate, a lower tech look to it. Now, what's interesting about that is if we come over here and let's change this to, let's say, three, so we can really see that it's jittery. And I could also come over here to this keyframe right here and change it to three as well. So that way it's going up and down just like that, as you can see. So now we have it always jittery no matter what it's doing with the animation. We could come over, as an example, to the camera tool. And I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to hold an Alt and just drag with the camera here to push into 3D space, just like this. So now you'll see that we have this camera tracking. If I double click on it and we were to come in here, you can see that it has this nice smooth line. And that's because the camera is actually interpolating with ones versus threes. So what you could end up doing is creating smooth camera movements with more low tech looking animation, which can help with some style effects as well. There's many reasons for intervals to be useful. And this is just scratching the surface, but hopefully if you find that you want to manipulate the way animations look, especially if you want to kind of give it more of a low tech look, I would definitely recommend checking out the intervals with your timeline because it can greatly change the way things look 
and it might help bring it closer to the vision you had in your head.